is the, the fourth, uh, you know, horse going to come out? And when is this? And when is the rapture? And when is Jesus going to return? Well, I'm not saying those are not good questions. And I'm not saying God doesn't have answers for those questions. But let's see what Jesus said here. He answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Now, that's an interesting word in, in uh, Greek. Paratheresis. It means to inspect alongside, literally is what that means. But another way to say that would be to gain information surreptitiously by, by uh, examining the clues, like you're a Sherlock Holmes, you know, and you've got your, you've got your man, okay, there it is. Uh, you know, it says, okay, I just read the cereal box and the numbers say that the, key, that the rapture is going to happen on May 24th, 2017, <laughs> right? It's not going to happen that way is what he's saying. It, it doesn't come by paratheresis, by, by surreptitious uh, taking note of something. He said, nor will they say, see here, see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Now, okay, it sounds like I'm saying something contradictory here, and I'm not. It's like, okay, if we're waiting until a certain date to see the kingdom of God, we got this backwards. The kingdom of God is going to happen, and that's going to happen on a certain date. We should be looking for the kingdom happening and not for a date. If we're waiting for a date, we're going to miss it because when that date comes and goes, we have either received the kingdom or we have not. Again, I'm not saying... Don't pay attention to end times. You know, some people will take this and, and use that as an excuse to not study end times. Say, well, see, it's not important. You just need to get close to God. Well, what I'm saying is it's the getting close to God that is going to bring all of that into fulfillment. Romans, go back to the God, uh, epistle of Romans, chapter 10. It's hard to wrap our minds around these things, I know. But really, you don't have to have a mental uh, picture of all of this to believe it, to grasp it, to understand it. You can understand it with the eyes of faith. You can, you can, you can see it in your heart. You can see it in the eyes of your spirit. And, and you can receive it and, and believe it and be ready for it. You know, for that date, the, 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 the catching away of the 144,000, you can receive that and believe that in your heart. And, and that's really where the work is all getting done. Um, Romans 10, verse 6. It says, the righteousness of faith speaks in this way, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. See, a lot of religions have that, where you do some certain kind of ritual. You know, the Native Americans did that. You know, they would sit around a campfire and beat the drums until the great spirit would come and, you know, materialize in the fire and speak to them and tell them how to defeat their enemies or something. That was... That, you know, they conjured up. And even, even within Christianity, I think sometimes people think, well, well if I just sing, en sing enough songs and get worked up enough and get, get, get uh, enough emotion, then, then the Holy Ghost is going to show up. Well, no, that's not what he's saying. He said, you're not going to bring him down because he's already here. He's going to bring us up. <laughs> so don't... Don't say in your heart, well, who's going who's gonna to bring him down? Or who will ascend into the abyss to bring Christ up from the dead? Well, he's already been brought up from the dead. But what it does say is the word. The word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, 
that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. Keep that word righteousness kind of on the forefront uh, here because that has everything to do with the kingdom coming. Believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. So it is our faith, our belief in him that sets us free from the bondage to decay and corruption to enter into that glorious freedom of the Son of God. Righteousness is that kingdom within that Jesus spoke of over there in John. He said, hey, don't be looking over there, over here. The kingdom's within you. Well, okay, what's in me that is the kingdom? It's righteousness. Matt, go back to Matthew. You can let the place in Romans go. No, no, wait, wait. Don't let the place in Romans go. I'm sorry. But go back to Matthew. Chapter 6, verse 33. I'll read this in the Amplified. It says, Seek, aim at, and strive after. Well, you know what? That means we play a part in this kingdom coming in our lives. We open the door for it to happen. It will happen. God, God has made it available to us, but we open the door. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone opens the door, I will come in. So the the kingdom coming in our lives, in our hearts and lives, depends upon us striving after it and seeking it. Seek, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, which the Amplified defines as his way of doing and being right. Well, see, that is a relationship issue there. To be right with somebody, okay, like let's say you've had an argument with somebody and you, you make it right. It's like, well, then there's peace. It's you, you've worked out the thing and you, you know, well, we agree to disagree. Well, that's even working it out. But see, all of us have, have been in an argument with God. That's, that's what we call sin. And righteousness, it's when we go to him and we confess our sin, says he's faithful and just to forgive our sins, and that makes us righteous. Then we have, we have made peace with him because Jesus made peace with us first 2,000 years ago before we were even born. So seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and then all these other things will be taken care of. Well, let's expand on that idea. Go back to Romans. The kingdom here is connected with righteousness. There's some other things that his kingdom is connected to. Romans chapter 14. Again, what, what people in this realm want is whatever self perceives that it needs in order to per perpetuate itself. And what Jesus has said there and what he's going to say here in Romans 14 verse 17 is that those things that we think we need, that's not his kingdom. You know, I think, well, I need money to pay my bills. Well, then, then right there, I'm not, I'm not, that's not kingdom thinking. That's earth thinking. Or, well, you know, I'm hungry. My, my stomach's growling. I've got to have another meal. And where's that meal going to come from? Well, is there any food in the, in the fridge? Well, that's not kingdom thinking. Because he says, for the king, in verse 17, the kingdom of God is not a matter of getting the food and drink one likes, but instead it's righteousness that state which makes a person acceptable to God and peace and joy 
in the Holy Spirit. Well, we know that peace and joy are fruits of the Holy Spirit, as described over there in Galatians chapter 5. And there's seven others besides those two. But the point is, these are things that we get from God's realm through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our um, access to the realm of heaven, the, he the, the kingdom of heaven. Peace, Colossians, you can let Romans go now. You can let Matthew go. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Peace is not just, as it's sometimes defined in the Amplified Bible, as the absence of fears, uh, agitating passions, and moral conflicts. Well, it is that. But peace is a bit of the kingdom of heaven coming into our lives in this realm. You know, it's when... I know you've all been in these situations where you've been confronted with something in the natural, in this realm, that would scare the daylights out of you. But for some reason, it's like you say, no, God, God's got this. You know, I'm just going to go with him, and I'm going to get through this thing. I talked about that this morning with that big dog I encountered down there in the, in the hill country. Well, you know, in the natural, I, I, I would have been cowering. I would have been been screaming, frightened. I mean, this thing was, was huge, and it was fixing to tear me limb to limb, it looked like. But it's like God, you know, was just putting words in my mouth to speak to the dog. I was quoting scripture to it. I was using the name of Jesus. I was saying, no, there's angels. The angels give me, uh, you know, protection. And I was just talking to the dog, and finally it sniffed me. He said, well, okay, you're okay. And so he walked off. Well, you know, I, I was in a different realm then. <laughs> I, I, wasn't, I wasn't just walking in the natural. I was walking in the kingdom of heaven right then. That was peace. That was that realm coming down into this realm. And it says here in Colossians 3 verse 15. It says, and let the peace. And Amplified here calls it soul harmony. Well, that's where your soul gets in harmony with God. When you're, you're resonating with that other realm, you're not resonating. You know, they're trying to ring your bell in this realm, and you're not ringing. Okay? The soul harmony which comes from Christ rule to act as an umpire in your hearts, deciding and settling with finality all the questions that arise in your mind. Wow, you know, that covers everything. And in that state to which as members of Christ's body... You were called to live and be thankful, be appreciative, and giving praise to God always. Okay. Peace. Now, there's another aspect of this. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Let's tidy that one up. First Corinthians chapter four. Verse 20. This verse can be easily misunderstood. It says, "For the kingdom of God consists of and is based on not talk." But power. Now, that would seem to be contradicting the thing that we read over there in Romans where it says, you know, the kingdom is, is the, you know, you confess the word, you believe the word, you speak the word. Well, here he's saying, well, it's not a matter of talk. Well, so what, you're saying we don't need to speak the word or, or believe? Yeah, no, you need to believe the word, you need to speak the word. What he's saying here is, it's not a magic formula. You know, again, a lot of religions have that. They, they have, you know, if you will say this, this bit of, of something or other. I could ask Ellen to tell you that when, when she was practicing Nichiren Shoshu Buddhism, they had this chant. 
And I don't know if she even knew exactly the English translation of what it was she was saying in Japanese. Maybe she did. But the point was, it was actually the saying of the words, the acoustics, the power of the acoustics of that sound that was changing the natural realm. That's what they were taught. Well, he's saying here, it's not just a matter of that. I mean, he's not saying, hey, speaking the word doesn't work. He's not saying, hey, don't speak the word. That's not what he's saying. He's just saying, it's, that's not where it ends, okay? That's just where it starts. The kingdom is, is way beyond our confession. And look, let's be honest. There's a lot of times we confess the word and we're not really doing it prompted by the Holy Spirit. I mean, sometimes we are. Sometimes when it just, just naturally comes out of us, then yeah, that's the spirit in us, you know, putting the, his word in our mouth. But sometimes it's like, it's just a formula. It's just a rote thing. And then we're not really operating in kingdom authority there. So he says that the, the kingdom of God consists of and is not based on talk, but on power. And he connects that again with the soul. When our soul is in harmony, when our minds and our wills and our emotions are in harmony with God, then we have the power. Then whatever we say, that's when Jesus said, well, if you, you know, if my word abides in you and you abide in me, then you can ask whatever you will and it'll be done because of the relationship. Now go finally to Daniel chapter 7. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have because the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom is something we hear a lot about in the Christian faith and yet it's, it's still a mystery, very much so. And we will be spending eternity learning about God's kingdom. This is not something we're going to get it all figured out and put it in a box. Daniel, chapter 7, verse 7. Now he is retelling the, the, the vision of the four beasts, which has end time uh, explanation, which Steve has taught on here recently. Uh, Daniel 7, 7. And after this... Daniel says, I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong, and it had huge iron teeth, and it was devouring, breaking in pieces, trampling the residue with its feet. And it was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. And I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking pompous words. Now this is things that are coming in the future. I, it's really already in process now. A lot of this is going on now. But this is, this is what is going to happen here in this earth. Um, in the coming days. Now go to verse 23. The, the explanation of all of this is given to Daniel. And he says, uh, the angel that, that talked to him said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on the earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and it shall devour the whole earth, and trample it, and break it in pieces. The ten... Horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom and another shall rise from them and he shall be different than the first ones and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High and he shall persecute the saints of the Most High, shall intend to change times and law. And then the saints will be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time, which of course is the, the uh, right half of the board up here. But what, what we need to, 
to see from this thus far is that in this earth, things are going to go here. And if you're not one of those 144,000, it says that um, you are going to be vulnerable to the will and the intent of this uh, realm, this kingdom in this earth. Because this is going to be before Jesus arrives to set everything straight. But it talks about that in the next verse. And then it says, but the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. God's going to show up and he's going to throw the Antichrist into the lake of fire. Hallelujah. And then, verse 27, the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heavens shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. That's us. And his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all kingdoms shall serve and obey him. In verse 18, it, it says the same thing. It says, and the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Now, the words there, receive and possess, are important because this is what we are in the process of learning to do with God's kingdom. See, he's, he's talking here that eventually this earth's kingdoms are going to be done right and all of the wrongs and all of the evil and all of the corruption is going to be taken care of. Let me give you that. Go to Revelation chapter 11. But for us to be in receivership <clears throat> of the new realm when Jesus comes back to, to be the King of kings and Lord of lords, it says we will receive it and we will possess it. There's two interesting words there in Hebrew. To receive, we think of that as really kind of a, uh, a passive thing. It's like, you know, somebody passes you a, a letter or hands you a song sheet or something, so you receive it. Well, this is not just passively accepting something. It means to choose it, to, to, to seek it, you know, like seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, that's implied by receiving the kingdom. To seek and to acquire, to grasp it, to make it your own, and then possess it, you know, I have a lot of possessions. I've got so many of them, I don't even know what half of them are. <laughs> you know, I don't even know all the clothes I've got in my closet. It's like, oh, I had not worn this in 15 years. But see, there, he's not talking about possessions that are just kind of, you know, stuff. He's talking about something which you are holding and you are occupying. I mean, I'm occupying this, this black shirt with gray stripes on it. I mean, I'm wearing it. I'm, I'm possessing it. That's what he means when he says possess the kingdom. It means you're living in it. And it's going to happen just like it says here in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshiped God saying, we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is, who was, and who is to come because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry and your wrath has come. But the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and that you should destroy those who destroy the earth. Well, things are going to be different here after that. The millennial kingdom, that would be a, a whole subject in itself, and, and I'm not prepared to go into that. I know we need to get on with our day here. I mean, that could be 
That keep us here all day and into the next day talking about the millennial kingdom. But the point is, we can choose to receive his kingdom now because he said it's in us. It's in our heart. It's in our mouth. We can speak it, but the main thing is we've got to lay hold of it. We've got to, to seek it. Seek his kingdom. Seek his righteousness. And then all the things of this earth will be taken care of. And yeah, that, sometimes it's hard to, to reprogram ourselves with that, but it is the truth. So thank you, Father, for that assurance that you're